Hello everybody, I'm Saika Ichigo Chemistry Arclight and I am back with another video and yeah, if you watched my last video of my characters, the Vivaldi sisters, then <clears throat> I said in that video that that would be my last long illustration and yeah, that took 27 hours and it was a real nightmare to edit and yeah, I'm, I just can't do videos like that again but I do want to do uh, shorter illustrations still, ones that are preferably no longer than 10 hours and only have one character in it, not four. And um, I do want to also do uh, tutorials, so that is what I'm going to be doing in this video. Uh, what I'm going to be drawing is flowers, bubbles, mermaid scales, frills, and lace, and stars. Uh, so yeah, this might seem like a lot and I have no idea what I'm going to be calling this video, but I believe I can show you how I do it in a reasonable amount of time. Also, if you're wondering why I'm not doing videos on how to draw hair, how to draw eyes, how to color hair, how to color eyes, how to color skin, that is because I am always changing in those styles. I'm always either mimicking someone else's style or using someone else's style to inspire my own style that I have chosen for that drawing. And it's just always changing and there's nothing consistent about it. So I didn't really want to try starting with something that I'm not consistent in. But I am pretty consistent in these things, so yeah. The reason why I wanted to um, show these things is because I believe that I am pretty good at them and I've also gotten some questions about it. So the first one I'm going to be actually doing is mermaid scales, uh, mainly because I believe that one will be the fastest. So yeah, let's get started. We're just going to... I guess another word for these would be fish tails and... Ah, uh, fish scales. I said fish tails. Uh, and yes, that is right. The, uh, fish tails is definitely a never name for it. But um, I like mermaid scales better because it's prettier. And that is what I've used them on. So, uh, the very first thing you want to do is just make a circle. Oh, yeah, before I go any further, uh, these tutorials, these techniques that I'm showing, can be used in ever digital artwork softwares. The only one I'm not sure about is GIMP. I highly doubt it can work in that one. But I do think it can work in Krita. Midi Bang and definitely Clip Studio Paint. Um, although in Clip Studio Paint, there's also more tools than that, so some of these you might not even want to use because, uh, like the stars one, uh, you can you can't really draw stars as easily in Paintless Side uh, because the tool that you have to make automatic stars doesn't work like the best. Whereas Clip Studio Paint, you just have a stamper that does it automatically, so you might not want to use it. Also, I'm using a tablet, just a standardized Wacom non-display tablet. I don't think they sell it anymore, but it's an Intuos small, an Intuos Pro small black. Uh, so yeah, and it works really nice. But I do believe that some of these can be used with a mouse, and for this first one, I'm not even using a tablet right now. I'm using my mouse. So anyway, let's get on with it. Like I said, the first thing you want to do is draw a circle, and then you copy it. Yeah, like that. Then put them both on the same layer, and then copy and paste again. And you just keep doing this until you think you got it long enough. Uh, it definitely helps when you put them all on the same layer, and then copy and paste them again, so that way you're not doing one circle individually each single time, because that is a nightmare. I've got it long enough, but let's just do it one more time. Necessities, a simple pair. And there you have it. I think that's about even, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so then the next thing you're going to do is copy and paste it one more time and move it downwards, but then move it slightly so it's off. So then it looks like this. And then you go onto the first layer and push selection source, I mean working layer, and then transparency strip, transparency stick, select everything outside the circles, then invert it, and then there you go. You got like little nice half circles. Then you put on the same layer and you do it again. And that's pretty much all that's to it. I mean, it's pretty simple, like I said. It's something that I came up with myself, but it's not like it's that hard to do. And then you've got like a nice pattern. I was originally looking up for some acids on Clip Studio Paint, and I was also looking on Google, seeing if they had any 
like transparent ones that I could use that were stocked, that were free. But then I was like, it wasn't working out quite well. So then I was like, oh, I'll just do no scales. I've seen illustrators do that, where they just color it. And that looks nice, but I really wanted to make it look a little bit more mermaid -y. So I wanted scales, so I just came up with this. Because all scales really are, are just pieces of scales overlapping each other. You want to make sure you have it all in the same layer, or else it won't work. Well, it will work, but it'll take longer. And there you go. And, okay. Then once you feel like you've got enough, I'm actually doing this background, so I'm going to open up this. Sketches and line art should be in this file. There we go. This is the original line art for this drawing right here, and that is what I use the scales on, so I'm just going to show you how I apply them. Oops, that was some snowflakes that I drew. I was actually going to show you how to draw snowflakes in this video, but then I realized I just learned how to draw them, like, literally yesterday, so I'm not really that skilled in that. But anyway, so, yeah, how you want to apply these is, I'm not sure if this will work as well on a side mermaid, but I will try it, but this is on a uh, mermaid that's looking at you straight ahead, so yeah. It's obviously a little bit more working. But anyway, so you just kind of fit it like that. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all. And then you copy and paste it. Now see there's a bend in this tail, so what I'm going to do with these circles is I'm just going to like rotate them a bit. But just do it slightly so that way you can't really see it. And then once again, you copy and paste. And then, also, once you get down towards the ends, what you want to do is uh, make it a little bit smaller. And, like I said, I think you can use these on a fish, too, but I'm not sure. Also, if you use this technique, you don't have to credit me. Um, I mean, you can if you want to, and it would definitely be nice, but uh, you don't have to. Uh, like I said, this is nothing that's that hard. It's nothing that's special. Okay, for this layer, I'm actually not going to put... I'm just going to do that. Make it a little bit smaller. Ah, I don't want a shortcut key. And then... Now you have one big giant sheet of mermaid scales, and you're probably saying that looks a little bit awkward, so what you want to do is then go into the tail, reverse it, and then there you go. Now, I was going to show... Now... <clears throat> I can't really show you how to color it, but I think I can go into it a little bit, so I'm just going to do this really fast. This is not the color that I use, but basically you just do that. And then if you want it to be really uh, good looking, uh, you uh, get a darker color, get a brush color, and then you just go like that with every single one. Now, if you don't want to do that, and it's taking forever, what I do is I put in a folder, put selection source, and if you don't know anything about selection source, I've got videos, a one video that shows you kind of how to do it. Use that. But anyway, I'm just going to do this. Color everything on the tail. Now, I'm not going to do all of this because that would take way too long, but basically you just go like that. And that's a lot faster. But at the same time, it also looks a little bit more stiffer and less organic, smooth. I'm not sure what the word is. But uh, yeah, it does look a little bit more stiff because it's going around the lines. You could also like raise this up a little bit so that way it's a little less stiff. But yeah, then once you do that, you delete the second line art and then there you have it. Some nice colored scales. Let's just do a little bit more. So that way you can get a little bit more of a general idea. 
and then since I'm using pencil Sai, another thing that I do is I, um, uh, eh, I made it disappear. Is I, um, go on to the textures. I use glass 2 texture, and then I just do that. Well, take some different layer. I do that, and then that gives it, like, this really, really pretty, like, tail texture and then like I go up here and do the same thing only this time I do it with luminosity and that gives the tail a lot of uh, shine to it and if you want to see how I do that all all of that in a more faster mode then I will link to this speed paint where I do the entire tail uh it doesn't have a narration to it or talking but you do get to see it how I do it and that's pretty much how you make a mermaid tail and uh yeah so let's go on to the next one and that is bubbles I'm probably going to save flowers for last, um, because that one will probably be the hardest. Bubbles are pretty much easy, is pretty easy. I got inspired by this with Hyananatsu, but I kind of made my own too. So, eh, I'm confused. Bubbles. Okay, what you want is a nice, um, well first I'm going to put like a blue background. Here, so that way you can see what I'm doing. Nice ocean blue. There we go. Oops, this is on stoner textures. I want to take that off. Oh, no wonder. There we go. Nice ocean blue, and then like a nice light blue. So that way you can see it. So, uh, yeah. If you're doing it against the bar dark color, then uh, from what I've learned from Hanatsu, is you want to use like a light color. And you just make a blop. doesn't have to be perfect although I am also a little bit anal so sometimes I am just someone who craves perfection but uh, that said as long as it's like coming into it and it's still like a basic circle and there's no hard edges like that monstrosity just like that there we go and then there you have it you got like a nice basic shape for your bubbles. Like I said, this is inspired off of Kananatsu's tutorial on how to do bubbles. Uh, she doesn't have a video, but she does have a um, um, page on DeviantArt. Where she says it. And then you just kind of um, fill it up with some color. And uh, shadows. What really does help is if you uh, have like some reference. Now, I don't think that there is anything wrong with visual reference as long as you are not uh, tracing. And even with like tracing, I don't think that's 100% wrong as long as you have the prior consent of the person you are tracing who took the original picture or photo or something like that. But it is a lot more nicer when you do it yourself. And then, yeah, not quite as nice as Hyananatsu's, but at the same time, I'm just like not trying quite as hard because I just wanted to get the general idea. I don't need to do anything. That dancing. But yeah, you get the general idea. You get some color, you get some shadows. And like I said, really look up real pictures of bubbles. It just goes there. In fact, uh, let me, let me open up this drawing to be in fan art. Here it is. That should remind me how I draw bubbles. But yeah, this is basically how I drew bubbles. This drawing is really, really old and it's actually kind of hurting to look at it. But, uh, I do like the bubbles. Uh, a lot of them are copied. And another thing that I would... Uh, step I would definitely take in drawing bubbles is sometimes draw like the reflection of well I copy and paste that of whatever is next to it and that kind of adds some uh, depth to it but uh, yeah let's just do this one more time against the light background so that way you can see ah, I actually deleted everything what it's like You get some light color, 
and then you get your bubble line, and then you get some light color, dark color. I don't know, I'm colorblind. And then you get some light, and then you get some highlights, and then you get another dark color. Let me get dark blue for this. Oops, wrong dark blue. There we go. And then you do that. Make that a little transparent too, so that way you can... Your bubbles always have, like, a little bit of transparency to them because bubbles aren't solid. They are transparent, you can see through them, and they're very shiny, so... Uh, you never want a solid bubble. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much how you do bubbles. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you how to do is frills. I'm just going to make all this stuff disappear so it's not distracting me. And uh, this one I've definitely had a lot of experience on. It's a little time consuming, but it definitely does look rewarding. So I'm just going to make like a little collar here. And uh, yeah, this will do. Make sure that it is no gaps or else this, it will work, but it just won't work as easy. I actually think pearls are very fun to draw, but I know a lot of people have trouble with them, so I can understand that too. But basically you want to draw a line straight down. I'm going to try talking to do this at the same time, but uh, you basically go swiggle, 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 swiggle. And then you stop, rotate, I'm going to erase a little bit of this because too much of them is kind of leaning this way, so I'm going to erase about, no wait, I'm going to erase about that much. And then you go back the opposite way around. Swiggle, 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 swiggle. Now since I'm rotated, my hand kind of naturally goes that way, so you always want to just change it up a little bit so that way it's not always going the same way. If you want it to go the same way, you can. I mean, there's no crime in that but it does kind of look a little off. But basically you just go swiggle, 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 swiggle. Uh, keep your hand very loose. Uh, don't keep it tight. And when I say loose, like don't go like mm, trying to get every single detail. No, just let your hand loose and just go like that. Well, have some control. Uh, and then you just straighten out the parts that look off. Not my best work, but it is a little rushed. And then, once you're done, you just draw lines up here. These are the folds. Now, sometimes you make these lines connect all the way straight up, like I did with this one. Just gonna fix that a little bit. But sometimes you just want to make them, like, halfway. And then sometimes you might not want to make it all at all, like, you just do that. These uh, U-shaped lines are also very uh, handy. Make sure you have some of those. And uh, it really helps emphasize, like, um, loops. Now, I'm going above the collar line. I am aware of that. But at the same time, uh, I am going to fix that. So, This is why you say no gaps in the collar. You just, ugh, that looks godly ugly. Then you do that. And then there you have it. Well, almost. You might want to put things under here. Now, not on all of them, just on the ones that you know will be really visible. Like ones that go like really wide in, then you know something, a uh, bit of it underneath is going to be invisible. Ones that are more tighter and closer, like, I don't really have any on this, but, like, this one right here. 
this wouldn't be necessarily visible, but this one is really uh, steep in its curve, so it would be visible. And I'm not sure if that's actual scientific fact, so don't judge me on that, but uh, it's just what I do, and when I'm done with them, they do look nice. And I do know when you make them, like, when they're too close together, it looks a bit off. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think there's fact behind it. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much how you do frills. Uh, like I said, it's a little bit rushed. But, um, just gonna... And this is the drawing that I used a lot of this technique on. Um, let's see if I can get the render. I know I have it. Somewhere. Here it is, this one you can see a lot better, but uh, yeah, this is basically what I did on here. And I, like I said, I think they look really nice, personally. And I really think they got a lot of depth to this drawing. I used it all on the skirt, I used it on this flouncy thing on the end of the jacket, all on the umbrella, and I did it on double sides for uh, the rims right here of the umbrella. Which, in that case, uh, I know it's kind of a little hard to see, but basically you just go like that, and then you go like that, and then you make them like meet in, in the middle, and you just kind of clean it up. But yeah, that's where that technique can come in handy, and like I said, I actually enjoy drawing frills. They're a little bit hard if you don't know what you're doing, but once you get the hang of it, I think it's pretty easy. Nope. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to be showing you how to do is stars. Well, actually, no, wait, lace. I forgot to do lace. So, yeah, we're going to show you how to do lace. And this one, I'm actually going to be putting my tablet pen down. I use my tablet pen for the frills, the bubbles, but I use the mouse for the mermaid scales, and now I'm going to be using the mouse again. Now, uh, first, what you want to do is I'm actually going on MS Paint. And I'm gonna get a proper shape. This one looks good. Now, I actually got inspired by this through a tutorial on digital art. And again, I will link to that down below. So that way. But yeah. What you want to do is just draw like this shape, which name escapes me at the moment, and I'm feeling really, really stupid. A hexagon, that's it. Ah, I feel stupid. Anyway, what we're going to be doing with this is we're going to be making a honeycomb uh, pattern. Now, you can do this on uh, Clip Studio Paint 2 because I know it has a ruler which helps you draw straight lines, but I do not think you can do this as easily on Paintful Sai. Not impossible. I mean, Bitty Bang and Krita. Not impossible, but definitely harder. So, like I said, a lot of copying and pasting. Um, oh, oh, also you put the hexagons on your side, and you just, like, make them fit together like if it was a beehive. Pretty simple. Also, again, uh, put them to the same layer and then uh, copy and paste them, so that way it takes less time. Because if we were doing one on top of another, that would just be, like, forever. And, yeah. You could do this without a line art tool, and you could just do it hand-drawn. Uh, but, and the line art tool definitely looks a little bit more uh, stiff, whereas hand-drawing one single hexagon and then copying and pasting it over and over again definitely looks a little less stiff. At the same time, um, I think lace kind of actually needs to look a little stiff, personally. Um, but that's just me. This pin that opinion could probably not be <coughs> shared by other people. And, uh, with that also said, lace is usually really small. Like, right now I've got really big, but I'm going to make this a lot smaller. Which is why I'm making so much of it. But yeah, once you think you've got like a decent sheet of like hexagons going on here, and I think this is like big enough, uh, I'm gonna make this a lot smaller though, like I said. 
make it a lot smaller. Now, when you do it with the liner tool, the liner tool kind of goes like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of it and then uh, make it bigger again. That size is pretty good. And then I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger because now that it's smaller, you puts it, in, puts it into perspective of how little I have actually. I think you could also do this with diamonds too, but I think or a square shape, but a hexagon definitely looks uh, nicer, and I think that's more commonly used in lace. My dog is chewing very loudly, so I think it just works nicer. Works nicer. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty big right there. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this all on. Uh, well, first I'm going to change it to a white color. Well, actually, I'm going to change it to this pale. Actually, I'm going to do a black color. Black. And you could actually get like a hexagon pattern online, but this tutorial is showing you how to do it entirely yourself. So that way you don't have to worry about using any acids. You can say, I did this all by myself. Anyway. Once you get a nice lace sheet, what you're going to do is, this is a drawing that I made of my character Azura a long time ago, but I'm just going to use it for an example. I'm going to put the liner here, and then I'm going to copy and paste, and then I'm going to put the lace down. And uh, as you can see, this is actually still too big, so I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. I'm just going to do it on the chest area. And it kind of gets a little depixelated, but that's actually a little bit okay. Because, um, like I said, I don't think lace has to be perfect, considering it's so small. And it's hardly noticeable, but at the same time, if you like go overboard, you just want to erase that, so that way the lines, you don't have <clears throat> one hexagon that's darker than the other. But you also want to be careful. Here we go not ruin the order and there you have it there we go <coughs> and then you just make sure it's um, on every single part that you want the lace to be visible at and uh, yeah that's pretty much all I wanted to be visible but now I'm gonna make the lace disappear and I'm gonna switch to selection source again and I'm gonna select every part where I want the lace to be showing so it would be all this entire sheer part Like I said, uh, you can also look up references of real lace. I have a lot of different pictures of wedding dresses and things that are like that. I've also looked at a few tutorials. Like I said, this is what this is inspired off of. So this this one isn't completely all my idea. But I did add a few things of my own. But... Um, There, once you get everything selected, you just go like that, inverted. And then, yeah, there you got it. You get some nice lace. And that actually looks really nice, so I think I'm going to keep it there. The only thing I would say, though, is a uh, tip is when you uh, want to color a drawing, keep it on a separate layer, so that way you can make it disappear, so that way it's a lot easier to color. Because if you put it on the same layer, then you would have to it would be like this and you have to do every single single one and that could, that could get really annoying. Now before I finish with the lace you might be saying oh but I want more than just that I want like the cute little decals on it or design whatever you want to call it. So yeah how you do that is you just um, take it up here and then you draw out like the shape of what you want. 
I'm doing this in a bright blue, but uh, once that is only so I can see it. Um, let's do hearts, actually. Hearts are easier. And you just draw it, like, everywhere that you want. And then once you're done, you kind of, like, do that. And there you go. And then, like, there you have it. Some perfect, nice lace. Um, like I said, you can use that to, like, draw any pattern you want on there. But, like I said, for this one, I don't want to draw any pattern on. I just want to do it like that. But uh, this is what I use this on, this technique on. This is a drawing of my character Akira and Azura again. And uh, you can see right here, I drew like a rose pattern on it. And I just, well, I basically uh, drew the lace all over it. And to make it look like it was a little bit of um, more than just um, lines, uh, another thing that I recommend is I didn't do it on this drawing because I already had it on here, but um, let me just open that up again. Is you put a sheer thing over it, like don't just keep it like skin color. Like, let me place this up here again. Section source. Don't uh, just like keep it like that. I mean, you can if you want, but then it looks like this, and it looks a little bit more like fishnet stocking material instead of like lace. If you want it to look more like lace, then um, keep it, uh, have some like uh, sheer uh, color over it. Which, in case you know how you do that, uh, is you just take a color that you want, like in this case it's black, put it over it, and then lower the opacity to the desired um, darkness or lightness you did you want. And if you want the lace to look more finer and detailed, then you just make the hexagons uh, smaller. Like, here the hexagons are really, 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 really small. Like, really small. And here they're more bigger, and then they look more like fishnets. So, yeah, that's pretty much how I draw lace. And uh, the next thing I want to show is uh, stars. Now, on uh, stars, I'm going to once again make a dark blue background. So that way you can see what I'm doing. Um, I already have, uh, several brushes here, which I made, which have, uh, some texture in them. Oops, you can't see that. Uh, and they do look nice, uh, but they look a little bit off, and I might not always want this, because, like, as you can see, it's a little bit splashy, and then plus the stars look a little bit, um, kind of, like, random. Like, what if you want, like... Well, when I say stars, I guess I more mean shine. And uh, this is really easy to make. Uh, you can make several kinds. You can make this kind. In which it's just like... I say it's easy and then I end up having trouble. Just like that. And uh, you always want to make uh, the wider part of the brush, which in this case is usually where the brush starts. Uh, be the part that's at this end, so that way the tail will come out here. And another thing you can do to make the stars look a little bit more nicer is you can put like a circle. Like that. And then that looks really, really nice. But like I said, on Clip Studio Paint you actually have assets that already have pre-made stars and they do look a little bit nicer. But, that said, sometimes it's just fun to draw things yourself and say that I did everything myself and I didn't use any assets. Of course, you can always draw a star like this. And that is a horrible star. I actually don't know how to draw a normal five-pointed star. I mean, I, I can draw that, but it's not perfect. And it looks really, really messed up. But I never kind of star that I like to draw, and I'm going to open up uh, this. I based it off of the medallion kind of thing that's on uh, Sailor uh, Saturn's uh, outfit. Is this kind of star. It's more like an oblong, pointed kind of star, so I'm going to show you how to draw that. I'm not sure if it is... Um, 
Like all those kind of stars, those were made with Clip Studio Paint. So once again, the star involves the liner tool. I'm now using my uh, mouse again. Unless I say I'm using my mouse, uh, just assume I'm using my tablet. And what you want to do is just like make like a diamond that is uh, longer on one end than the other, so not an even diamond. <clears throat> and then you want to copy and paste. And then copy and paste. Again, uh, these can be made without this uh, line art tool. I just find it a lot easier with the line art tool. It gets the lines nice and straight. And in Clip Studio Paint, there is a ruler, which would help too. And if I was in Clip Studio Paint, I would be using the ruler. And there you have it. Now, um, you could leave it like this, and I think this in itself looks really, really pretty. Although, let me know the lines are thinner, I see that there's mistakes. And, like I said, that looks really pretty in my opinion. But, uh, you might want to, like, give it more, so I'm just going to move this to a normal layer. Put that in the same layer. Um, and then, um, I'm going to rotate this and that in itself looks really pretty so you can even keep it so transparent like that and you then you get all those pretty lines in there but if you don't want it transparent then put them both on normal layers you can't do this if it's on a line art layer because line art layers don't so oh that's just wrong I got in selection source they don't do that whole uh, selecting thing or you can do that and yeah, that's pretty much how you make that kind of star. And I think it is really pretty. I learned how to do this myself. And uh, if you want even more tips, you can just do it again. Put it all in one layer. Rotate. And once again, you can keep it like that so you can see all the lines. Or you can... Uh, make it go invisible like that and that almost looks more like a sun or kind of flower so I'm actually gonna leave it like this and then finally the last type of star that you can do is this kind which is the laziest one of all just that with a little bit of uh, airbrush around them but there's something nice about those kind of stars too. They're lazy, but they are nice. And then if you want to, oops, all of that was on the same layer. And if you want to make more, you just copy and paste, copy and paste until you've got the desired amount that you are going for. And then there you have it. That's three different ways you can draw stars. And finally, last but not least, before we close this video, is flowers. And when I say flowers, I actually was going to plan on doing lilies and roses, but um, I'm not really that experienced on lilies, so I'm just going to mostly show how to do roses. So I'm going to open up my acids by me. Uh, this is a lily that I drew, and then these are ever uh, lilies and flowers that I've drawn. But like I said, I don't really know how to draw these, but I think I can show you how to draw this one. But let's just stick with the rose right now. Like I said, it never hurts to look up real reference. Um, I mean, I know a lot of people say, oh, I drew this without even looking at a real thing. Uh, and that is nice, that is impressive. But at the same time, if you just want something to look real, then you have to look at what's real. There is no harm in that. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, when you're drawing a rose, uh, the first thing you want to start out with is, is the middle. So you just kind of draw like a loop. And then you draw like that. 
Now I'm going to clean this up a little because it's a little messy. But I'm mostly just drawing the sketch. And yeah, you just kind of make the pe petals uh, overlap each other. And I do better when I'm looking at a picture, but just for this tutorial, so that way you know I can do it without, because I have looked a little, I mean I have done it without looking, I am doing this like this. But uh, yeah, you just kind of like make a centerpiece and then you make petals overlapping each other. And then once you've got like a decent sketch, you want to clean it up. And now this is where you don't want to like make messy lines. You want to make the more uh, difficult lines. So when you do make a mistake, like right there, you just want to erase it. But I think the key part of drawing a nice rose and I've been drawing roses for a long time, so this is just my experience of drawing roses. And this is just one kind of rose. Obviously, I think this is like the most basic rose that you think of when you're thinking of rose. Like, hey, that's what I think of rose. But there's also like the closed kind of rose, which I have drawn before, but this is the one I know I draw the best. And there's also um, the open kind of rose. which is even more like, it's kind of like this, but it's even like more open. Or you can do like a wild rose. There's all kinds of different breeds of roses now that I'm thinking of it. But, uh, this is just like a basic rose, and you kind of want to make sure it's a little bit even, so that way it's not looking a mess, although there is lots of times when a flower isn't even. And then you just want to draw the leaf. That is, if it has leaves. Like I said, a reference never hurts. And there you have it! That actually looks nicer than I thought it would. A nice, lovely rose. something happened to my place but anyway like I said these are the everflowers that I've drawn but I don't think I want to show you how to draw those mainly because I don't think I have the mental power anymore but I just want to show you one more thing these are all the flowers that I have for uh, visual reference as you can see it is a lot I took most of these photos down here these aren't by me but uh, most of these are all photos that I took around me they are of real flowers and this is basically what helps me draw. Uh, nice, pretty flowers. If you want to draw really pretty flowers, then you gotta look up real flowers. And uh, I think it really does help when you have real reference, and I don't think there's any shame in it. So yeah, before you're drawing any kind of thing, but especially a flower, uh, look up real reference. It will help you. Like. In here, you can kind of see the different folds of how a rose is, and this is like more of an upper view where even the inside is kind of open, or then there's, like, that's where the inside is a little bit more closed. As you can see, it's a little hard to tell because it's up, but it's more tighter on the inside instead of loose, and then, like, there's some daisies and stuff, and yeah, that's basically how you want to draw a nice thing. So anyway, I think I'm pretty much done with this video. Um, I think I've showed you everything that I wanted to draw. The bubbles were a little bit lazy, so I do apologize about that. I really didn't have any ideas for the bubbles. Oops, the bubbles are behind my stars. Yeah, everything's all running into each other. And, um, so I do apologize that the bubbles aren't really that much, but I really do hope this video helped you. And I hope that um, you learned something. And if you did, please let me know. And also, if you want, 
if you see me draw on everything, like maybe some hearts or uh, doilies or everything's like that, and you want to know how I draw them, then let me know in the comment section, and I will maybe make a video about it in the future. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a nice day. Be safe, and be healthy.